Okay. All right. And then we're going to find the balance on those sit bones. And we're going to pretend we're operating against an imaginary wall, have the back of your head, both shoulders, bottom rib, both cheeks all lined up against that wall. Let's take a big inhale through the nose, fill those lungs. Open mouth, exhale, let it go. Inhale through the nose, fill those lungs. With this exhale, think of fogging up a window. Inhale through the nose, fill those lungs. And with this exhale, let go of any stress you're dealing with. And now keep the mouth closed, breathe in through the nose and out through the nose. In through the nose, fill those lungs, a little pause at the top of that breath. And then think of slowing down the exhale. Once again, through the nose, trying to look for the emptiness of the lungs. Inhale. Deep breath, fill those lungs, a little pause. Slowing down the exhale. Trying to find the emptiness of the lungs without gasping for air. Immediately find that next inhalation so that you find your perfect rhythm and flow of breath that's perfect for you today. With that next inhale, think of reaching through the crown of the head and lengthen. And on the exhale, think broad collarbones, and allow the shoulders to roll down the back. Inhale, see if you can feel that rib cage expand wide, east and west. And on that exhale, think of funneling the waist, press the sit bones down into your mat and in towards each other. Inhale, reaching through the crown of the head and lengthen. Exhale, open up the chest and allow the shoulders to roll down the back. Inhale, rib cage expand wide. And exhale, lengthen the waist, sit bones down and in towards each other. And hopefully you have found your rhythm of breath. You have found your spinal alignment. We are going to strive to keep both of these throughout the practice and let the breath be your guide. It can be a barometer. If you I show different options for moving into each pose, if you go for the more advanced pose, just make sure you're able to take that full deep breath. That will kind of keep you in a safe position. Take notice of the benefits of this breath. It lowers our heart rate and our blood pressure and our cortisol levels. It also oxygenates our blood, more oxygen readily available to transport nutrients, antibodies, and, and healing the body. Let's do the same thing with our thoughts, cleansing our thoughts, welcoming positive, pushing away negative. So perhaps welcoming happy memories over the last few days, let it drift in and out of your consciousness, push away any worries, any concerns. Perhaps being grateful for living in this beautiful state of Colorado with our gorgeous mountains. Push away any list in your head. You don't need that right now. And I always like to start the practice by bringing to mind at least one person that I'm grateful to have in my life, maybe dedicating this practice to that person. And push away any thought of competition. Yoga is not about competition. And imagine as if the ventilation system in this room 
sucks up any negative energy, carries it out of the room, leaving us with an open, peaceful, grateful heart. So let's go ahead and change the crossing of the legs. And inhale, reaching through the crown of the head and lengthen. And on the exhale, let's rotate the chin as far as you can towards the right. And then inhale, bring it slowly. Inhale, center. Exhale, rotate. Inhale, center. Exhale, rotate. One more time. Inhale, center. Exhale, rotate. Hold that full rotation of your neck to the right. Cervical vertebra are designed to do that. Like softening the tissue in the neck and throat, shoulder, and even up into your scalp. With your next exhale, just up that slowly. Inhale, lift it back to that neutral starting position. As you tuck and fold, inhale, lift. One more time. Exhale, tuck and fold. Inhale, lift. Bring it center and then rotate to the other side. And first, find that rotation. Once again, softening the tissue in the neck, the throat, shoulder, and scalp. And with your exhale, tuck the chin. Inhale, lift to neutral. Exhale, tuck. Inhale, lift. And exhale, tuck. Inhale, lift. Bring it center like you're pouring the water out of the top of the head. Ear comes to shoulder. Inhale, left. Exhale, lower. Inhale, lift. So be mindful that you're not shrugging that shoulder up. Just reach the crown, bring where your ear can go. Inhale, bring it center. Exhale, fold to the other side. One more time. Inhale, center. Exhale, fold. Reach away with the opposite hand. So left hand reaching away. And if you'd like, right hand resting on the temple area. A little gentle pressure down, but weight of the arm instead. A little gentler way to open that neck up. And if you don't like the way that feels, you don't have to have that top hand on there and then inhale left and exhale lower left ear to left shoulder reach away with the right fingertips and then left hand resting on the right temple area let that go heavy Exhale that breath away. Bring you guys in front here. Leave the right arm behind. Inhale. On. Exhale, find your rotation. Abdomen opening. Ribs, chest, collarbone. Head is turn. Check and see if it's the shoulder down the back. And then see how it feels with that left hand. As long as it doesn't hinder the breath, you feel like it aids in opening up your spine. Do it. And then inhale, bring it center. Exhale that breath away. Right hand to left knee. Left arm behind. Inhale, spine long. And exhale, find the rotation. Abdomen, ribs, chest, clavicle. Head is the last to turn. Maybe adding a little gentle pressure against that left knee. Just check if your breath. And then inhale, bring it center. Exhale that breath away. Let's come up to all fours. Now from all fours, if you would like a little extra cushioning for your knees, feel free to double fold that mat. Okay, that will create a little more cushion for you. And let's open up the 
chest shoulder cavity. Uh, we'll lift the left arm up in the air, rotate the wrist a few times in one direction, and then a few times in the other. And then we needle it through. So there's lots of options in this next pose. I have my left ear down on the mat, my right arm, you can have it flat on the mat and just reaching towards the mirror wall. That's, that's um, one option. I like lifting the hand towards the ceiling. And then from there, you can maybe bring your palm to sacrum, forearm resting on the small of the back. And if you're very flexible in the shoulder, chest cavity you might be able to bind with that left inner thigh. Just listen to your body. Find your opening, don't force, find your breath. And then let's bring that right hand down to the mat, come back to all fours, and we'll lift the right arm, rotate the wrist a few times in one direction, and then a few times in the other, and then take that arm and needle it through. Right ear, right shoulder, left arm reaching, maybe towards the mirror. Maybe you like lifting up towards ceiling, palm the sacrum, forearm resting on the small of the back, binding with that right inner thigh if that's available. Once you feel like you've found your pose, just use that breath to guide you. Take that full, full deep breath, the pose you've chosen. And then let's release, left hand comes down, and come back to all fours and we'll bring that um, actually we'll now I'll come into cat cow from here so bringing the gaze forward there's our inhale and then on the exhale tuck that tail start rounding the spine tuck the chin for cat pose and then reaching through the crown of the head to shine the heart forward for cow exhale in cat think of that upper back lifting towards the ceiling and then moving through to cow, think of this, the heart shining forward. Spinal flexion is cat. Spinal extension is cow. Taking that spine through its full range of motion in this plane of movement. That's why we do it. We open up all our joints. Cat pose. Notice the sit bones face the back wall in cow, and then the sit bones face your mat in cat. And with that next inhale, let's bring our right foot forward in between the hands, knee in line with ankle, left forearm on right quad, right hand to sacrum. So we hinge forward, our gaze is towards the gym wall. Here's our starting position. You could choose to stay here to go into a deeper torso rotation the elbow comes to the outside of that leg and then you can add on a balance factor by breaking the hands into the prayer from there you can line the elbows up with each other shoulders with each other and then think of lifting the abdomen off of that quad each one of those steps just gets you deeper into the pose but choose the one that's right for you and then let's release, and we'll bring that right knee back, and that left foot forward. Right forearm on left quad, hand to sacrum. We hinge and we rotate. There's our starting pose, elbow coming to the outside of that leg, hands together in prayer. Think of lining the elbows, shoulders up with each other. So by adding those, instead of just a torso rotation, we're getting hip and shoulders open, and then all pads pressing into each other, adds another lunge, huh? And then let's release, let's bring that left knee back, let's bring the right leg out to the side, right hand on right leg. Inhale, lengthen, exhale, fold, elbow open the ear, opening up that side body. Tendency, this elbow wants to kind of fall, drift forward, try to keep it back by the ear. That way we oscillate our side body. And then uh, try not to flop the Energize it. Beautiful. 
and then reaching through that hand. Maybe you need a block for your hand to be able to touch the floor. I got short legs, so I can easily, easily touch it. Tee out the arms, and if it's available, lift the right leg. Modified half knee. Place the right foot down, reach the right fingertips, come on up, bring the right knee in. Left leg out. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, fold. Elbow over the ear. Breathe into the opening of that right lung. Reach to the top. Up arm, hand on block, or floor, tee out the arms, and if it's available, lift your left leg. Left foot comes down, my fingertips come back up, bring your left knee in. We're going to bring that right foot forward again, this time, instead of right between the hands, bring a full step in front of your hands, and that's going to protect your knee. Hips are square, side body long, lengthen, leaning into this front right leg a little bit, quad pressing back, tuck the cheek, adding the back bend. Pigeon pose, a form of pigeon pose. Lowering the arms, shift your weight back, coming on that front heel. And maybe you've got tight hamstrings and you need to glide down that leg. Otherwise, hinging from the waist, abdomen is close to quad. Hands can be on your shin. They can be on blocks. They can be on your mat. So if you think of it as this kind of a fancy forward fold, once you're in that fold, then tuck your chin and think of the crown reaching towards your toes. And breathe. And let's release, and we'll bring that right knee back and bring that left foot forward. Full step in front of your hands. Hips are square, side body long and lengthen. Leaning into that front leg. Quad pressing back. Tuck the cheek under. Adding the back bend if that's available. And breathe. Lowering the arms, shift your weight back, coming on that front heel. Maybe we're gliding down, maybe hinging. Find your hand placement. Tuck the chin, crown reaching towards toes. Check and see that you haven't shifted your weight over to that right hip. Keep the hip square. Get that nice balanced opening for that hamstring. It can be a pretty intense opening. So if you need to have that knee bent a little bit, it's okay. And then let's bring that left knee back. We're back to all fours. We're gonna come into our first downward dog. So curling those toes under, and then lift the hips high, and find your downward dog. So I first concentrate on my sit bones lifting towards ceiling. Feel that added opening of the hamstrings. Then check in that all 10 finger pads are equally pressing into your mat. Shoulders away from the ears. Hug the hip center, lengthen that torso, ribs lifting off the pelvis. Adjust that right heel down, feel that. Hip. And then let's pedal it out a little bit. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. And if it's available, lowering both heels down. Downward dog, stretching the entire posterior side of the body. If you get fatigued in this or any other pose, please feel free to bring your knees down, move in a child's pose whenever you need it. We'll bend the knees, bring the gaze forward, walk your feet towards your hands, and then bring hand to elbow, hand to elbow, and hang my rag doll. This is where I like you to check into what I call the four corners of the feet, that equal weight distribution. So I think of the ball of the foot, big toe, pinky toe, Inner and outer heel, 
equal weight distribution, and then check into your knees. Uh, I don't like locked knees, so think at least a micro bend. And if you need more to protect your lower back, please bend the knees to wherever you need. Let's sway those arms slightly, slowly, I should say, side to side. Feel that added opening in the hamstrings, hips, nice rocking motion for our spine, and even a different kind of stretch for our shoulders with these heavy arms. And then bring it back center, release the arms, bend the knees, and we'll roll on up. The head is the last to lift, and we'll roll the shoulders back. And we're ready for our standing poses, our warrior poses to start. I'm just gonna move the camera. All right. So we'll have our right toes facing the mirror wall and our left toes facing, and I call that the cabinet wall. Then we have our back wall, the wall behind us is the gym wall, okay? So I use that for cueing. My right heel is in line with my left arch. I have a wide stance. Hands on hips, the hips are open to that cabinet wall. Float the arms up to nine and three. Bend that right knee, finding warrior two. So the deal with that plunge is you go as deep as you're comfortable going. What you want to look out for is the knee does not fall in, so use your adductor to push it out, and then make sure you can see your toes. If your stance is too short, the knee will go past the toes. You don't want that. That's not good for the knees. Shoulders are down the back. The gaze is over that right hand. And then this left leg, try to keep it as straight as possible. Quad pushing into that hip socket, tuck the cheek under. Warrior two. Straightening that right leg, lower the arms. Right toe facing cabinet wall, left toe facing back wall. Float the arms up to nine and three. Bend that left knee. Find warrior two on this side. So once again, find first the depth of lunge that's right for you. Then check in as the knee gently pressing out. Can you see the toes? And then check in with the front right, uh, right leg. Quad pushing the hip socket. Try to keep ears over shoulders. We don't lean into this one. And go ahead, straighten that left leg and lower the arms, and left toes facing cabinet wall, right toes facing mirror wall. Left hand on left leg, flip the right arm up, palm up, bend that right knee. First reach towards the mirror wall, and then find your side bend. So elbow over the ear. I have feather-like touch in this back leg, or that forearm can come to the small of your back. I like doing that, it makes me engage my core more. Strengthen the core, you strengthen your lower back at the same time. Belly button pulling in, pelvic floor lifting up. Straightening that top arm, straightening that right, or lifting that right leg, straightening the right leg. So right toes facing the cabinet wall, left toes facing back wall. Right hand on right leg, flip the left arm. Palm up, bend that left knee. First reach towards that back wall and then find your side bend. Elbow over the ear. Feel free to have feather light touch in that front right leg or forearm coming to the small of your back. That extra core engagement. Straightening that leg, lowering that arm. And let's have the left toes initially facing the cabinet wall, the right toes facing forward. We're just going to make a little change with our foot. Turn it in a 45 degree angle, hands on hips, and then you can rotate your hips forward. You shouldn't feel your lower back and go with that. Bend that right knee, energize the arms for our warrior one. I'm just going to stay here. Those arms extending, reaching. Feel that spiral effect coming up that back leg. And breathe. Good. 
we go ahead, straighten that right leg and lower the arms. Right toe initially facing the cabinet wall, left toe facing the back wall. And then that right, those right toes, we're gonna to just turn it in, 45 degree angle, hands on hips, rotate the hips to the back wall, bend that left knee, energize the arms, find warrior one on this side. We're lifting the ribs off the pelvis. Feel that spiral effect coming up that back wall. Straighten that left leg, release the arms, and lower. Let's have the toes facing the cabinet wall. We're going to do a wide angle standing forward back. Let's add on chest expansion with this. Interlace fingers behind the back. Inhale, bring the gaze up. And exhale, folding forward. Wide angle standing forward then. And then adding fingertips reaching towards ceiling. Maybe past ceiling, even towards the back wall, if that's appropriate for you. Check into the equal weight distribution on the feet. I'm doing that. Notice how that does engage those inner thighs a little bit more. Find your breath. Make sure you're doing okay. And then you can use those arms to help lift you back up. And then our left foot's going to come to meet our right at the top of the mat. And the breath center. Great job, everybody. Left toes are going to stay facing the mirror now, and the right toes are going to face the gym wall. And now, slight change. I'd like you to have the heels in line with each other, and then hands on your hips, and your hips are open to that gym wall. All right. Triangle pose. Now, triangle pose, warrior one and triangle pose are the two poses that I just take a little extra step because it's ones that can uh, tweak the lower back and I don't want that to happen to you. So I just take this extra step, okay? So float the arms up to nine and three, shift the right hip to back wall, reach towards the mirror wall. And now from there, just windmill the arms, see where that hand lands and just take a, a brief moment here Feel how the lower back feels. If there's any twinging, what I'd like you to do is bend this front knee and, and ease into it today, okay? Otherwise, the, deep, the way to go deeper in this pose is to come into this front hip. So I would just kind of check out where my knee is. Can I rotate it a fraction of an inch more towards that near wall? Can I sink into that hip? And then how does my gaze feel looking up today? If it bothers your neck to do that, don't add it on. Keep it straight, looking straight ahead, or even look down. I never want you to force, you know, into discomfort. Kind of the best sense, the, the deepest is hurts good. <laughs> hurts so good, right? Don't know what can. I never will to let you know. And then we're slowly coming out of this, reaching the top fingertips, slowly coming out. And then let's have the left toes face the gym and the right toes face the back wall. Float the arms up for nine and three. Uh, shift the left hip to near wall. Reach the back wall. Windmill the arms. See what that feels like. Feel okay. Check out the knee. And then see about sinking into the hip. And you might not be able to sink. You might be flying where you initially land. You just kind of feel what's going on with your body. Bring the gaze up to that outstretched hand if that's available. And check in with your breath. And slowly coming out of that pose, reaching to the top fingertips, slowly come up and lower the arms down. Let's have the right toes face the gym, left toes face the mirror. Let's bend this front knee, forearm resting on your quad, and we're bringing the arm overhead. This is called standing lateral bend. This is always an option if triangle doesn't feel good one day. This is still getting that lateral opening. Okay, from the body. So we're going to add a core exercise with this by floating this bottom arm up. So pull belly button in, lift pelvic floor with your exhale, 
Think of floating that bottom arm, not holding a beach ball between those hands. Give me three breaths here. Reach to the top arm, straightening the front leg. So right hand on right leg, flip the left arm up. It's called reverse triangle. fingertips and come on down and let's have the left toe space the gym right toe space the back wall bend that left excuse me right knee forearm arm resting and left arm overhead standing lateral bend get organized with your core and with your next exhale float the bottom arm up pretend you've got a beach ball three breaths Top arm, I'm going to straighten that right leg. Left hand on left leg, reverse triangle. Reach the top fingertips and lower back down. So let's have the right toe space the gym, left toe space the mirror, bend that left knee again, forearm resting, and bring the arm overhead. So we're going to add a shoulder opener. We did it at the beginning of class. You're going to face the same direction as you, so you see your options. So first of all, you feel, feel free to stay right here. We're going to add on, if you like, fingertips lifting up to ceiling, palm to sacrum, forearm resting on the small back, binding with the left inner thigh. Now, I only add this on because there's several of you that can. This is not, this is beyond gentle, okay? It's so only if you have the flexibility, there's several of you that can do it, that's why I show it. This uh, left hand can come down either on a block or to your mat, and then it's called interlock where the left comes under and basically binds with the right. I'm gonna stay with the more intermediate pose to encourage you to be where you need to be, okay? But if you wanna venture and try it, feel free. Release, inhale, lift, so lower the arms, and let's have the left toe space the gym, and the right toe space the back wall, bend that right knee, forearm resting, bring the arm overhead, and feel free to stay here. Otherwise, lifting up towards the ceiling, palm to the sacrum, forearm resting, binding with the right inner thigh, right hand can come down, come under, and heel up, double body. Project release, inhale, lift, exhale, lower the arms, have the toes facing the gym wall. So we'll add on our rotation with our forward bend facing this direction. We'll start by folding forward. Big inhale, exhale, fold forward, and then taking that right hand over towards the left shin ankle area. God bless. Maybe that left arm feels okay to lift up towards ceiling. The gaze follows it, maybe. And maybe it feels good with that right hand. A little gentle tug on that left leg. Doesn't feel good, don't do it. And I'll bring that uh, left arm down, we'll walk over towards the right leg, left hand rests, uh, right arm comes up, maybe the gaze follows it, maybe it feels good to add a little gentle tug with that left hand, breathe, and then let's lower that right arm and bring it center. If you have lower back issues, I do recommend you bend your knees as you lift. Otherwise, lift those arms wide to come back standing. Lower the arms and we'll bring our left foot to meet our right, put the foot of our mat, and then turn face forward. And we're ready for our balance pose. All right. So if you are unsure of your balance, please feel free to go to a wall. Just having a fingertip on a wall can 
be a nice little security blanket, okay? So feel free to do that. And what I thought we would do today, um, we didn't get to do warrior three. So T pose is very close to that. And what it looks like, I like adding a breath and movement to movement to T. You can't just come from a standing position, but this is how I do it. So I'm gonna find a dristy or focal point. I'll first show you and then you can choose which way you wanna do it. I'm gonna take a step forward with the right. My arms are like holding a beach ball and I'm lifting that left leg. So similar to word three, okay? So inhale, exhale, step forward with the right and lift the left. So you find that focal point, think of a beach ball between those hands that helps engage that upper body and helps with our core. Maybe that leg is two inches off the mat. Maybe it's in line with your hip. If you can get your toes to face your mat, that will square off your hips. Good job. All right, big inhale. Exhale, step out with the left. Hinge, find your focal point, your dristy. Lift your right and breathe. Take a step back with the right and then your left, breath center. Great work, everybody. Come back to your mat. Big inhale. Exhale, fold, standing forward bend. Bend your knees a lot to keep your abdomen resting on the quads and then hand to elbow, hand to elbow behind your legs. So your forearms are resting on your calves or so. And then with your next exhale, just slowly straighten the legs to whatever capacity you can go. Feel the increased stretch in your hamstrings. But with those arms there, all that gets right between those shoulder blades, upper back, really nice. Bend the knees, release the arms, come down on your mat for child's pose. So many options with child's pose, but you can have your knees close together. I like mine wide on my mat. Um, maybe the forehead directly to your mat. If that bothers your neck, you can stack hands or use a block and have your forehead on the hands. You can have your palms up on either side of the body, which actually adds more pressure on that third eye area. And the most common and kind of most comfortable, I think, is palms down and reaching overhead. It's a nice spine stretch, shoulder stretch. And I was trained to call this devotional, but it's just another form of child's pose. So I might use that terminology. I never. Mm -hmm. And I feel the work you've done so far. And then let's come up to all fours. And we are going to be on our knees for this next little portion. If you want that fold in the mat, please feel free to do that. And then I'm going to ask you to lift the right arm and the left leg. And first think of those limbs reaching away from each other, so that lengthening effect. And then think of balancing out the hips. Pretend you got a glass of water on that sacrum. And then pay attention to the strength of the opposite limbs that are holding me up. Lower those limbs down. Left arm and right leg. So first find the lengthening. Then balance out the hips. And then take notice of the strength of the opposite limbs along with your uh, oblique system that's holding Lower those lips down. So let's consider your back exercise. Lift right arm, left leg, and lower back down. And then as you lift the other limbs, see if you can feel how the muscles that follow your spine contract. That's what they call the back exercise. But I like you to hold these different limbs up there just to see what all else is going on, right? There's a lot more going on. And then as you 
go with your breath, lifting these opposite limbs. I want you to take notice. That is your gait. That's how you walk. So as that right leg comes forward, the left arm should be swinging forward and vice versa. Lift, lower, lift, and lower. One more each side. Lift, lower, and lift. All right, let's stretch out the spine. So bones reaching back, fingertips reaching forward. And then I like to add on a little bit of a uh, We'll get abs a little bit and a little bit of our booty, but added strength today. Back to all fours. Lift just the right leg. I want you to think about bringing the knee in and think of a mini cap pose. I'm trying to bring my nose to knee. I can't reach, so that makes you feel any better. And then you press straight out and the spine goes long. Okay? So bring it in and press through. As you bring it in, that's a crunch, right? And then as you press back, you work in the butt. So bringing it in, and push through, pull in, push through. Let's do two more of those. Pull in, and you might be feeling that upper body a little bit holding you. Pull in, push through, and lower that knee down. Let's lift the other leg up. Round the spine, think of the mini cat pose, knee to knee, nose, nose to knee, and then press through. Bring it in, and push out. Bring it in, push out. We'll do a few more of those to be balanced. Go ahead, bring that knee down. Sit on the back. Fingertips reach forward. And then we're going to lay on our abdomen with the right ear down on the mat. Palms up on either side of the body. And this is designed to be a neck stretch, but it might be too intense for you if that's the case. Try putting a forearm underneath your ear. And if that still doesn't feel good to turn your head that far, stack your hands, forehead on stacked hands. I never want you to force into a pose that is uncomfortable, okay? Switch sides, left ear on the mat. Chin on the mat. Hands directly underneath your shoulders. We're coming into cobra pose, another back exercise. Zipping those legs together. And I'm going to um, hug my elbows in. I'm going to hover my hands off of the mat. Reach through the crown of the head. I think of shining that heart forward. So you're basically trying to lift the chest. It's not a big movement. And then once you've lifted, think of squeezing the shoulder blades towards each other. Might lift another fraction of an inch. And then lower their right ear down on the mat, palms up. Chin on the mat, hands again underneath the shoulders. This time we're gonna keep the hands there. I'd like you to still to initiate from the spine with the lift, okay? So reach through the crown of the head, lift the chest, and then put weight into your palms and find your king cobra wherever that is for you. Shoulders are down the back, elbows hug in, just fine, what feels right, without a strain. Lower back down, finish the next stretch pose. Left ear down on the mat. And then let's press back in devotional. Sit bones reaching back, fingertips reaching forward. And then let's 
come onto our back. Now I alternate you doing a uh, half pigeon, sleeping pigeon. So I'm gonna be doing figure four today. We did pigeon poses last Monday. So if you would rather do that, you're not insulting me to do that, okay? So feel free to do uh, half pigeon, sleeping pigeon. If you don't know what I'm talking about, <laughs> you get to do figure four with me today, okay? And then you'll get to know the other one next, next time. All right, so let's hug the right knee into the chest first, you're on your back. And this is a classic lower back stretch. If you suffer from lower back um, issues, this is one you should do at home. Okay, notice it's getting the hamstring, but it, it gets into that lower back and your glutes as well. From here, we take that right foot, place it on the left thigh. Think pinky edge of the foot. And this creates a figure four with our legs. And then we're pressing that right knee down towards your mat. So it starts out with the sensation of an adductor stretch. But feel how as you hang out here, it goes into your hip. That's a deep uh, hip muscle called your piriformis that we're trying to get stretched. And you can choose to stay here down on the floor, a little more intense to lift the legs up in the air, needle the arms through, interlace against the hamstring of the straight leg, See if you get your elbow on the inner thigh of the bed leg. If you can't, don't worry about it, but it'll add a little more depth to the stretch. Think gentle pressure straight leg towards you. And then with that elbow, gentle pressure bed leg away from you. Get all kinds of stretching going on. And then let's release that elbow, bring the left knee into your chest, lower the right leg down, start with that lower back stretch. and then bring the left foot on the right thigh, pinky edge of the foot, knee pressing down, and breathe. Lift the legs up, all four, uh, figure four, needle the arms through, interlace against your hamstring, and the straight leg, you get your elbow to the inner thigh of the back leg. Gentle pressure straight leg towards you. Gentle pressure bent leg being pressed away from you. Let's release. Let's bring the knees into the chest and the hug. Rotate the ankles. Awesome, good cracks out there. Rotate the other way. That was loud. <laughs> That must have felt good. All right, feet coming down to your mat, and we're coming into bridge pose. Bring your heels in as close to the glutes as possible. We want equal weight distribution on the feet, but we want equal weight distribution on our shoulder blades pressing into our mat. Take an inhale, and then on the exhale, peel up and find your bridge. So I first think lifted the glutes, Get that equal weight distribution to go a little deeper. By the way, keep your chin in line with your sternum. It protects your neck. You want to go a little deeper. Interlace your fingers underneath the body. And then it's a one-time rocking your shoulder under you, side to side. And it just lifts a couple, you know, two or three more of that thoracic vertebra off your back. It's a little deeper in the pose. That's all it is. Arms are energized towards your heels. Elvis presses up, knees reach away, and then think of having a yoga block between your knees. Breathe. Release the arms, roll the spine down. Let's bring your knees into your chest. We're gonna come into our spinal twist. So depending on the flexibility of your lower back, if you're pretty flexible, you can keep your knees towards the chest. Moderate or intermediate, it's kind of a tabletop knees in line with hips. You know you got tight lower back. Start with your feet down on the floor, okay? Tee out the arms and let the knees float over to your right side, keeping your left shoulder blade down, and then think of turning your head away from those knees 
and reach through the fingertips. And as you reach to the fingertips, notice, particularly on that left side, how that opens up that chest, shoulder, and then you feel it go down the waist, spine, maybe even down the, the hip and down the side of the leg. Inhale, bring your knees center. Exhale, let them float over to the left side. Turn your head away from those knees and then reach through the fingertips. Just that awareness of how much more of a stretch you get. Bring your knees into your chest. Let's finish with happy baby's pose. Maybe you're gonna, if you're very tight, you can just grab behind your hamstrings, grab the inner thighs, save your presses down, knees float wide. If you're able to grab somewhere along the shin, go for it. And if you can get the okay, so presses down, let the knees float wide and breathe. Try to find that balance in the hip opener. Bombs, your feet touch, lower your legs down. So I, I just have to interject something because this, this happen, happens almost every day. My dog, lab mix, um, people come and he does, I call it heavy baby's pose to make him rub his belly. <laughs> I just was picturing him, He's so damn cute. All right, so hands resting on your inner thighs, coaxing your adductors to just melt. Try not to arch the back, no flaring of the ribs. Supine cobbler's pose. Hands coming to the outside of those legs, guide your knees together to touch. And let's find our Shavasana relaxation. Please feel free to keep the knees bent if that feels better on the lower back, otherwise lengthening the legs, palms up and find that wonderful breath in through the nose, out through the nose, let the breath be effortless. Imagine that you're able to direct that oxygen to flow down to the toes, the balls of your feet, the arches, the heels, the ankles. Just let the feet fall heavy. Allow the oxygen to flow into your calves and shins, knees, quads, hamstrings. Let the legs fall heavy. Allow the oxygen to flow into the glutes, the small of your back. Your lats spreading wide as the shoulders begin to release. Any tension in the abdomen subsiding as the chest opens and the shoulders just let go. Allow the oxygen to float up the back of the neck around the skull to your brow, with soft eyes, heavy jaw, soft throat. Just taking notice how peaceful and relaxed you feel. And know that you got here only by recognizing your personal breath. And this is a gift you can give yourself any time you feel stressed during the day. Another tool that helps us with stress is a grateful, grateful heart. So let's bring to mind that person we started our practice with. We are so grateful to have this person in our life, cherish this person. Maybe strive to have that be one of your first thoughts of the day. And I just promise to you, it can be life-changing. 
start the day with a grateful heart. With your next breath, wiggling fingers and toes, bringing awareness back. And with your next breath, bring those knees into your chest and give them a hug. Allow them to drop to one side as you slowly roll up. Comfortable seated position. Your hands at your heart center. And the greeting in India translation the light, the love in me salutes every one of you. Namaste. Thanks, everybody. Beautiful practice. Sorry, I was running a little late today, guys. Oh, man, there's 11 of you guys. Ay, ay, ay. Cheryl, good to have you on there. Jerry, Nancy, glad you were able to make it. Love you guys. And it was another one recorded, okay? Have a great day. Candace, good to see you.